Hi and welcome back to Partick Hill Station. I'm Charlie. Um, I hope you enjoyed the exercise programme. It was very much tongue in cheek, so to speak. Um, mind you, it will get many of you uh, brownie points if you uh, put in a little bit of effort. So it's worthwhile considering. Yeah, uh, kind of busy this week, so this would be a, a short one. Uh, we'll do a full hour next week. Uh, and what we're going to talk about right now is the 3D printing that I've been doing and uh, my latest effort and we'll look at the process and then the final product and I'll tell you what I think about it so let's jump right in there. Well, this is a more adventurous uh, attempt at modelling. Um, as you can see it's it's a pressure tank and uh, I'll find a spot and use for that. So it's supposed to take three hours and 30 minutes uh, to print. And it's been sliced. I copied it to the uh, uh, to the stick, the memory stick. And I'm just preheating the printer right now. So I should be able to start and uh, within a couple of minutes and uh, get it printed. And this is something which I can build on. Maybe, uh, you know, if the results are good, I can add in uh, a ladder and different other uh, components to this. But let, let's see how this one goes. All right, so here we go. Uh, the printers begin to, to lay the raft uh, for the pressure tank. And we'll come back and check it out, see how things are, are moving and if the printing process is okay. Because this is a spherical, a horizontal spherical tank, uh, you can see that the printer is building supports um, between those two uh, main footings for the tank and hopefully uh, it will continue building from there uh, so much more to do uh, before we really get an indication that it's uh, it's going to be successful the printer's making some good progress there you can see how the shell plate of the uh, the tank is beginning to curve upwards uh, everything is working perfectly and in a couple of hours we should have a, a finished pressure tank. It's probably more than halfway through and you can see the honeycomb uh, infill. Um, you know in retrospect I might have tried a different fill and uh, maybe see next time I do it I'd maybe try to print it so that you just get the shell but I'm not sure if that's possible uh, you know maybe a two mil thick uh, shell plate so that there's no infill but I think you need the infill uh, to support the geometry uh, of the tank well we're nearly finished and it's looking pretty good whole lot of shaking going on there. I'll come back in a little while and it'll be done. It took three hours and 55 minutes and there we have it. Now I notice it's not perfect. I'm missing that top pipe that I had included and should have come out here. I'm uh, not really sure what happened to it. Uh, I'll clean it up and remove it so that we can have a, a better look here. So let me just get that done. So the finish is quite good. Um, I think it faulted in a couple of locations but 
once I clean it up, it, it'll look okay. Uh, the pipe outlet here just didn't show up at all. Um, maybe it dropped off uh, before the process of slicing was completed. Bit of an imperfection down here at this end. Not really sure why that happened. Bit of a rat's nest. But, you know, when you look at it, it's pretty good. You know for sure that it's a pressure tank of sorts. So I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, please give me the big thumbs up and let me know what you think about this. Uh, always interested in your opinions. Bye for now. So here's the uh, tank pressure vessel uh, that we ended up printing uh, three and a half hours. Now, in general, it, it turned out quite well, but in retrospect, uh, I might consider taking a different approach I might not put this uh, ring in here. Um, I might make these uh, supports uh, separate. And because it, it didn't work out quite well down here, uh, there's a lot of roughage here as a result of the printer trying to uh, start out with a support for the cylinder. Um, because uh, when you know when you look at the process, uh, you can see how it's printing horizontally. So if I if I were to do it again, I might try it this way. And what it would do is it probably build some supports uh, down here, and and then print vertically. Uh, might be a challenge with that flange plate. Not really sure, but um, you know, in general, it, it it turned out quite good. It printed the uh, uh, inlet or outlet pipe here. It missed one completely up there. I'll have to look back at the uh, at the file, and, and it's quite light. But even as it stands, it would make a great load uh, for one of the wagons, and I might just drop it in there on one of them as an example uh, there you go how about that uh, and we'll tie it down with some uh, chains so just to give you an idea of the of the physical size uh, overall it's eight centimeters and it's four centimeters high and uh, yeah, so 3D printing, uh, you can do all kinds of stuff, build all kinds of environments with it. If you just put the time in to model it and uh, and then put it through the process of uh, printing. Uh, you know, here, I haven't cut this off yet, but you can see how rough it is there. Uh, and I'm not really sure uh, why that happened, but it may be because it was trying to build this um, support or the beginnings uh, uh, of the cylinder. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. So uh, look for what's coming up next and uh, come back again to Partick Hill Station uh, where you'll find trains running and some other ideas. Uh, maybe uh, that would be next week. Anyway, remember, give me the big thumbs up. Really helps. You know how it goes. And thanks very much for dropping by. We'll see you again at Partick Hill Station. Bye for now.